The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is uh, Monday. The uh, I should know what it is. Monday. I wrote it uh, so many times over the weekend. Monday, the seventh of December. There you are. And uh, my pleasure to be here. Great programming. Got John Logan back. Got Larry. Got Tommy and Tom. Just fabulous shows. Hope I can do my best here and add to your knowledge market knowledge that is and of course today we've got the very first uh, Monday with a swimming lesson Kevin Inks swimming well today will be a little cold outside although it's a beautiful day for this time of the year in the Boston area but maybe um, we'll see what happens um, but swimming lessons indeed and uh, that's uh, options, just great options, Al, that uh, Kevin had on Tuesdays. Now he's added Monday. So you've got Monday and Tuesday, Kevin Inks. And I advise you, if you're at all interested in options, but if you're at all interested in learning about strategizing, just a great way to do it. So let's just go straight to the market. I'm showing you the e minis here down 18 and 2017. Spectacular day on, um, horrible day on Thursday. Spectacular day on Friday. Lousy day today, not horrible yet, just lousy day today. Um, but still with a higher high than Friday, and that's really important. Not only that, we've given back just over half of, of the gain of uh, Friday. It's the close that's so important. Weekly, you can see this weekly chart of the e minis. Hey, nothing here as far as negative uh, action is concerned. We'll see what happens by Friday. But uh, certainly, a close underneath 20.59 by Friday says, uh oh, be careful. Certainly, a close below 20.50. A close on the upside that's getting you closer to the high of last week of 21.05 would be really positive. Um, I think it's going to happen. Um, I don't know about Friday, but it's going to happen. He has a 120 minute chart, got your cup formation, got your falling axe, retested the low. We'll watch this real closely. All right, let's just get out of this. I want to go through all these numbers. Monday, let's go, go, go through everything in sequence. Um, there we go. The Dow, INDU. The Dow is down 164, 17,683. You see that trend line? I'm going to make it just for the show now. I'm going to make it nice and thick. So wait to make it that kind of thickness there. I'm going to make it a solid line because I want you to see that this is, there you go. Okay, uh, a solid line, that wasn't a solid line, what happened? Uh, style, there it is, solid line. And I'm going to change the color, in fact, I'm going to make it transparent a little bit. Transparency, let's go to 60%. Okay, now you can see how many times We've gone right from the high that was made at 17,977 on the 3rd of November. The very next session, try to break above, couldn't, sorry for trend line to the downside. Big spike up for a leg A um, on the 20th of November at 17,914. Uh, that's really the number we've got to watch because the close above 17,915 says got your leg B, it's going to be a, a positive action because it's, you're, it should take you to the 17,977 previous high. On the downside, a close below 17,570s suggests that not only will you retest uh, the low that was made on Thursday at 17,425, but that 200 period exponential moving at average at 17,396 uh, 17, is going to likely be hit. I'm in the camp that says majority of indexes, oh, talk about work. The whole weekend, actually starting Thursday, then going into Friday, and then all the way through the weekend. Why? Because I have a webinar coming up, and I consider it to be probably one of the most important webinars that I've given since the beginning of the year when we were looking at, I don't have it, oh, I do. I have it in front of me, the market comparison chart. This is the chart that we were looking at. We were right here. Here, it, uh, it was followed up on the 6th of March with another webinar at 16,390s. And I suggested that we were in um, 
in the Elliott Wave, in my interpretation of Elliott Wave, it was Wave 3 and that we should have Wave 4, a very sharp decline to come. And then we're going to see whether we can get Wave 5, and that's what this new webinar is all about. So what did we do? We went to 18,351 in the Dow in May, May of 2015. That created Wave 3 peak. And then it plunged down to 15,370, a 16% decline, one of the biggest declines we've had for a long time. Uh, and then we had a very sharp spike to the upside. I'm going to be discussing this in great detail on Thursday at 6 o'clock for my, for my uh, subscribers to my opening call. And the opening call uh, by Basil Chapman. Let me just go back here to show you something. Uh, TFNN right there. So right here you can see that we've got um, opening call. Elliott Wave 5, remember this is my interpretation. I'm not an expert at Elliott Wave 5, but I've done enough of it over many, many, many years to, to, to know that um, a lot of the Chapman Wave methodology is totally independent. The reason why I came up with peak A, peak B, peak C, because it was at a time in the 19, uh, early 80s when uh, Robert Prater was just everywhere you could, uh, everywhere on TV, talking about Elliot Wave. Elliot wave. It, it sounded really confusing. I knew my thing was, I called it the seven wave form, was very clear, and I wanted to differentiate it. Over the years, of course, I kept coming back to Elliot Wave because I just want to get knowledge about all these different techniques. And I found that within the techniques that I have, clarification of the Elliott Wave is very often, I'm told by many people who, who work with Elliott Wave, that using the Chapman Wave methodology actually makes Elliott Wave clearer. I find the exact opposite. I find that when I'm working with the Chapman Wave, I find it there are just those moments where there's an alternate wave count. And that's where I'll say, let's look at a different technique. Let's look at something like Elliott Wave. And in this particular instance, my, my thinking is we're in Elliott Wave 4 down right now with the potential for Elliott Wave 5 if we make a new high. That's different to Elliott Wave technically. But if we go to a new recovery high of 18,352, I consider that we've begun wave five, and wave five in my world will become very complex as we have a very sharp decline. And then the big move up for the monthly C's, B's, C's, and D's is going to come after that. Very, this is something. So, Thursday night, I'm going to be discussing these different levels. Hey, I want to add. This is um, it's a free webinar because all you have to do is sign up for the, for the opening call. You'll, you'll get a month free. But there are also Salvation Army Tiger dollars right now until I think the 21st. And I have to tell you something. To have those Tiger dollars, it, it does three things. Number one, it allows you to have some a kitty that you can build up to be able to use for any purchases here at TFNN, any one of the services mine or anyone else's. Uh, for any of the webinars or anything that you think is important that you'd like to uh, participate in. It, it, it's it's uh, essentially, it's like a, um, it's like a never ending gift that you've given yourself because you can wait until you want to use it for a long time or you can use it right away. Ha, that's the first. Second is it gives the Salvation Army Salvation Army Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale, a boost. It adds to the Tiger Dollar, and I know that you've been very generous, you Tigers out there. I, we thank you for that. So every purchase leads to not only a donation to the Salvation Army, but the third thing, which is you will receive up to 10%. First of all, you get a 25% bonus, but you'll receive up to 10% of your purchase will be a donation in your name to the Salvation Army that you can use as a tax deduction. All right, let's get back to the nitty gritties here. I think that's fantastic. So go to the front page of TFNN. All right, done with that. Uh, I thought it was very important right now to talk about those things. I then, the reason why I brought this up and I said I worked hard, look at this. This is for my opening call subscribers today. I, I, I must admit, it's like a, I called it a tsunami of charts, but I was thinking out loud. I was thinking about the Thursday uh, uh, show. I'm also doing Wednesday at uh, here in Boston, uh, in Cambridge, actually at MIT. I'm doing the. Uh, I, I'm I'm the guest speaker uh, for. Let me just see if I've got it here. Uh, da, 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 map. There's the map to get there. Uh, it's called IBD. Ah, Boston, <laughs> right there, the front one. It says 
Formerly the Boston Investors Business Daily Meetup Group, special speakers meeting Basil Chapman, where there's a, there's an MIT building E51, room 335, 70 Memorial Drive, Cambridge, Mass. Um, it says click on for the map. I actually added a map, and it's the corner of Wadsworth and Amherst. Uh, off Memorial Drive, Kendall Square area, 70 Memorial Drive. Uh, please RSVP, map and parking info at the bottom of announcement. Market talk by Basil Chapman. Basil is one of our most popular speakers. He will give us his analysis on and on. It goes on. Okay. Anyway, so I wanted to show that. It's a closed window. So now let me explain what I'm looking at. The Dow is now down 180 at 17,667. S&P is down 21 at 2070. The comp index is, let me just get to the comp index. I've got it right here. Move this aside. Move it aside. Where did it go? Hey, hey. Comp index. Oh, comp index is right here. Comp index is uh, down 44 at 5,098. Gold. This is going to be very interesting. The, the uh, the dollar is up 0.27 and 98.62, so you'd expect gold to be down, and it is. It's down 9 at 10.75. So, um, the um, high-grade copper is up a tad at 2.5. That's good. And you've got bonds of 26.30 seconds at 154 and 20.30 seconds. So what, what this really is leading to, and this is what I that, that, that I wanted to discuss here, is if I can just find it, get back again. There it is. These are the charts that I sent. Well, first of all, the rectangle pattern in the Dow. Uh, and I put a test. It should be a test today, and we're getting some kind of a test of the support. That's number one. Number two is... I showed the E-minis. We just discussed the E-mini. Traders' Corner, that's my uh, whatever it is, 17 or 18 bullet points of stocks, uh, indices that we are long, short, whatever it is. Now, we're mostly long at this particular point. We do have some shorts. Um, I discussed the volatility index. Why? Because you know my four, my four horsemen, Vixie, Bondi, Dolly, and Goldie. So that's um, the volatility index, the bond, uh, the dollar, and uh, you've got gold. Uh, very important. This is a very important, a really important moment as I see it. And my thinking here is that gold is going to have a rally for about four to six weeks. Dollar is going to have a bit of a pullback as it makes the U that comes into a little baby U for a cup for the handle. Um, and then I think we break out. I discussed the, the, the synchronicity between the dollar and our stock market. Um, I showed the South African index. This is very interesting. Where, where the South African index is acting right now, it's just broken support. Does it bounce back? Because it is. it does have the gold stocks inside there. I discussed gold, very long-term chart. I discussed gold in three time frames. I discussed gold as it relates to, um, as it relates to the dollar, but as it relates perhaps to commodities. And um, global temperatures. I, I'm even going to talk about global temperatures. This has got nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the global temperatures as I, as I read the chart that I see. So, uh, absolutely, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this uh, webinar. It be great. And I am in great fun. And I, I'm looking at the Dow down 179. And I will take your calls and we'll finish up with some of the detailed indices. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of their banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down 188. S&P's down 22. This is a really important moment because the extension to the downside Thursday was overdone. The extension to the upside on Friday was extremely overdone. There was just a burst of energy that just said uh, the shorts, we're going to kill the shorts. It was just kind of blatant. There was some buying, and that buying was selective. And if you identify, if you're able to identify where it was, you could do very well. Now, this is going to be very important for a number of reasons. Because you've got, because gold went up, um, the gold index, not necessarily the price so much, the gold stocks and the gold index went up so sharply on Friday. Thursday, gold didn't really participate very well. Stocks did very well, but not, not the gold itself. Now, what's really important about this is that as a commodity index, if I can, first of all, let me just explain. The XME is the spider S&P metals and mining. That is making new multi-month lows, multi-month, multi-year multi lows as we speak. The last low was back in 2008 at 17.15. We're trading at six at 15.48. Okay, so that's a very big negative. Uh, the weekly chart very negative. Um, the daily chart has just made the U formation, and it says unless it springs back today at the absolute latest tomorrow. Above closing above 1555, so 1548 right now, 
Um, you got to be real careful. This could be the start of the H pattern, a kind of a, a give up with volume and everything. Days young, and then you get a nice turnaround. Then you can start the H, the lowercase H that goes to lowercase M. That's okay. We'll see. But I had a question uh, from Adam about the XOI. And the XOI, there we go, X, oh gosh, I used to have this all notated. XOI um, is plunging in the monthly from a doji type, long legged doji candle from last uh, month. The, uh, it's trading at 1094 down 53. This is the ARCA oil index. And it is at, uh, making the H pattern after the peak C in the weekly, if it goes even just a little lower to 1084, that's going to be a, almost certainly a peak C minus, and that suggests a C minus breakdown, always suggests it's going to retest the previous low, in this case, 1023 of the week of the 2nd of October, and then week of last week of August, 1015. So this is a really important moment, and the daily chart has gone <clears throat> peak A, B, CD peak D right on the 200 period moving average, which should be a magnet. It's become a, a, a repellent line. So this is very negative. And so I would uh, shorting, you know, short right now the second at 1094. It's kind of risky because there could be a bounce of seven points before it goes to a lower low. But I do, I would just say to you the way it's acting for closes anywhere below 1099, it's at 1094 right now. There's a real good chance that it'll collapse tomorrow again and I would say that the this whole area here I'm going to draw the rectangle that's going to be your base of support if it can't hold that that's really negative so we watch watch that real closely and that says suggest that anywhere under 1060 you're this is in real trouble all right that's XOI um, X and G yeah the natural gas UNG UNG is in the same category um, it's just a plethora there's just too much of oil and natural gas at this particular point. It's different now. If you're going to go to gold, see, gold is giving back a chunk. This is that single leg A syndrome that you've got to watch real closely. Does, <clears throat> if the Dow was only down 45 points instead of 195 right now, I would say to watch out in gold because the dollar could have another V shaped pattern just to retest the previous side close to it. I don't think that's going to happen. I've got uh, what I said to subscribers this morning. It's making a leg E in the 120-minute in the chart. There might be a little more room on the upside, but there's a good chance that the dollar is going to, it's in a consolidation already, and that it'll probably make lower lows over a period of, of a week or two, and that gold should start to move slightly higher, and um, the stocks have actually moved tremendously. So the relationship here, EUR, USD, let's just go to that. This is what I'm going to talk a lot about in, in the webinar. I'm going to explain to you relationships, relationships of certain commodities to the stock market, the relationships of uh, um, the relationship of chart patterns, the mirror image where you can take one that goes up and one that goes down in, in um, to make some kind of an oval pattern or a V-shaped pattern against a, an inverted V, that sort of thing, yeah, very much like a mirror, mirror image. Um, and I'm going to explain what happens in a single leg A. Well, by then it'll be Thursday, and we already know. But in a single leg A Chapman wave syndrome, that's where the A goes in one move. It just goes splat to the upside, and it doesn't even form an A. Look, this is not even a peak A yet. We, we, don't, we have not gone from the low to make a trough with a new high. You have to go above, you have to go above a particular left side bar before you can make a peak. I'll talk about that when we get back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, folks, we're, we're back. Dow's down 170, S&P's down 21, and we got, I got a couple of really good questions here. Well, the, all, all, all the questions were <coughs> either questions on a particular index or stock. Uh, first of all, let me just do this. Caterpillar looks like that XME charge. So I'd be very careful. If you're thinking of shorting or you are short, great. Uh, it's at 67.85, down 212. I'd be looking at a, a target. <clears throat> if in the next hour and a half, it closes, any bar closes under 67.81, that was the low of the 22nd of October at uh, 4 o'clock. If any bar closes underneath that, you can start making projections towards the gap, and the gap is underneath 66.52. Upside is very limited with 70.21, the nine period exponential moving average. Now, this is, this is a question that I'd like to deal with. Uh, Sarah asks, <clears throat> right there, number one, rut. And number two, how will we make five up on Elliott Wave when you have peak E on a monthly for the Dow Industrials? That is a fantastic question. That is the question that I'll be dealing with. And I'm going to be dealing with it in such a way as to show you exact parameters, exactly what the requirements are, and what would set in place a new buy mode in the monthly chart. And if it's a monthly chart, and this is only leg A up, December, you can't get a peak D until, let's say December the 26th is the high of the month. And you plummet on the 26th, 
and you start January off much lower. And then all of a sudden, you've got yourself the potential for a leg. But also, I have to imagine, I, I don't know how this is going to happen. This, this is stretching it a little bit. Let's just imagine that we've got a confirmation you've gone to a new all-time high. You don't have to for this to happen. But let's just imagine if we, uh, that, that it happened. That means you've got peak A in January if it's all down the whole month. Imagine February spectacular and it goes to new high. That's leg B. That's March when you got yourself a peak B. Let's imagine that it Im immediately reverses and it goes up to a new recovery or all-time high, and that's leg C. I can't remember what month we're at now. So December. So January is peak A. March is peak B. April, May is peak C. June is leg D. You've got until June before you even get to leg D under the absolute perfect circumstances. So this is as that the analysis that you do right now, if you're going to include Chapman Wave buy mode in the monthly chart, is that either you've got a rotation where you've got an alternate wave count that's missing because the Dow went under the previous load, went to 15,370. So it gets, I, I don't want to make it complicated. I just want to make it as easy as possible. So you need a new all-time high to be able to legitimately, legitimately start the wave count for a new buy mode. And then you can have a smash to the downside as long as you don't take out 15,370. And then you can start your another uh, series of high. But that means that you're really talking about late next year. How can we last that long? I don't think we can last that long. Not if you're looking at my Dow Quartet with GE acting very, very nicely here. It's at 30.25, holding very well. Monthly chart, weekly chart is in peak C. Monthly chart, now there it is. Could be G slash A. It's an amazing chart. It's got that stalk leg formation. Got to keep that in mind. But hey, uh, this is, G is really leading my Dow Quartet because IBM, which really represents more than New York Stock Exchange. Think of IBM as the New York Stock Exchange. It's lagging. Uh, it's had a nice little bounce off the low, but really the monthly, weekly charts are very poor. Um, Triple M, which is an international company that is a spectacular company, just under the radar, hardly anybody talks about 3M company, multinational conglomerate. And look how nicely it's holding here with a high-level consolidation, weekly peak A, um, monthly, it's it's closer to its all-time high than the most recent low, so that's acting very well. And UTX acting horribly <clears throat> after making 124.45 uh, all-time high back in May, I think it was, plummets down to the 85 area. Now it's at 95.75 of two cents. So. I got a real mixed picture with GE perhaps being the best, Triple M next, IBM, the New York Stock Exchange, lagging, lagging, lagging. And um, uh, Triple M and UTX are really the stalwarts with Triple M being the major one out of the two, uh, Triple M or UTX, United Technology. So we're going to be watching this closely. So the question, of course, is a great one. In the IWM, this peak that we just made could be an alternate count F. I don't want to count it as an F just yet. It, it fulfilled all the other requirements of the stalk leg formation down to the beak and a very strong rally off the beak. You remember the beak low can produce a huge move to the upside. But I don't like today's move. Today should have not been down 142 at 11.40 in the morning. It should have been, <clears throat> doesn't have to be up, but it should have been really close to the 117.40s, at least a point higher than it is now. That's not a good sign. <clears throat> so I'm going to emphasize again. I think that the Dow is leading right now. And it's ironic that it is. And it's using old tech, the old, old tech, as being part of the leading group. And look, the monthly chart of the ID, IWM still very strong. Weekly chart is the one we're going to watch real closely. All right. So the question is, <clears throat> and I'm going to answering it in, in certain ways, as clearly as I can, on Thursday evening in my webinar on the relationship that I am seeing in my work to the possibility of an Elliott Wave 5. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I didn't even show the charts uh, over the weekend. Um, there were just too many charts. But if you look at what's going on, I showed the charts the other day, 15 to 17 new 700 feet or higher buildings down in lower Manhattan, 35 to 36 
in mid Manhattan and about 20 in the upper part of Manhattan. This is an incredible period. Matches the late 1920s, as I've been talking all year. The matches are incredible. I'm going to be talking about in my webinar. I'm going to be talking about um, clothes. I'm going to be talking about songs. I'm going to be talking about automobile, engine size. I'm going to be talking about skyscrapers, bridges, tunnels, giga. We're not talking about um, in the macro move. We're not talking about me anything. We've passed mega. We, and we're on giga. That's how big these things are going to be. So um, I'll be back there. Um, in a moment. So, in other words, that is exactly a great question, but I can't answer it right now. I also want to, a couple of days here to see how we handle the next um, the next phase, which says that we've got to make new highs, the recovery highs, that is, in the Dow and the S&P and the QQQ series. So let's just make it as simple as possible. Then Bob asks a good question. He says, seasonals, do you have projections for Q1? 2016, first three months price action. Will there be another January sell off like in 2015, 2014 for 2016? I think so. I think January is going to be a tough month. Any way of knowing to get long or short into January the first 2016? Well, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do that. Um, we, we grabbed the long position on Friday, triple uh, uh, long position in the Dow. And we got stopped out, just stopped out by pennies now for a nice profit, but nothing like the unbelievable gain from the almost the exact low on Friday. We, we took it all the way to the high, but um, probably should have just got out. But I, yeah, I, wanted to, I wanted to try to hold it, but we have long positions, and I'm, I'm kind of happy with them right now. Um, we also, uh, we're nibbling in the gold area. I think it's, it's going to move. Um, so let's get back to our story now. Um, in the aspect of volatility, I'm going to spend a little bit of, remember I had a, a webinar earlier this year on volatility, the relationship of volatility to the markets. Well, the VIX right now is up two at 16.82. It's up 13.57%. The day's young. I suspect it's going to close up instead of up two. I think it closes up 1.1, maybe only 0.90. And I think the market is going to come way off the lows that it's at right now. This is my thinking. Will it exactly happen? I don't know, but that's my thinking. All right. And um, the 12.4, the high that was made on the 3rd at 19.35, slumped down to the 14, mid 14s and low 15s. And it had to just spike again. So the whippiness, remember I, I said we're coming into December. I'm expecting a very whippy December with slightly higher highs. In other words, I run a major bull. I am expecting higher highs there uh, in the down the S&P and the Qs. Okay, just wanted to get that on the table. Now, downside. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, <clears throat> the Dow is not going to do very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have a little drink here. My tea. I think the Dow can go to the 18,000s. I'm not sure yet if it's able to get to 18,352. <clears throat> but I think it will get to the 18,000s. And that's where we're going to have the biggest challenge. I'm wrong. If the Dow takes out, oh, I've already said that, takes out the low of the Thursday, it was in a different context, or Wednesday, uh, Friday or Thursday, the, the 17,425 <clears throat> low of Thursday, and the 17,396 200 period exponential moving average low is going to be critical. The MACD is deflecting lower. Stochastic was good. It's now at 66%. It's going to take a lot of work. And that's the reason why I'm saying I'm hanging my hat on the, month, on the weekly chart because it has been so strong. And I think it's going to remain our bellwether and our benchmark. And at this particular point, at 90% in the stochastic, down 159 on the daily chart. <laughs> this is nice action. It really is. So um, let's be clear about it. Um, I don't expect a spectacular move into the 18,600s in this particular phase, but I do think that there's a really good a chance that we will be rallying and we'll attempt at least to get to 
uh, test, the 17,977 high that was made on the 3rd of November before we start to break down. That's just my thinking, okay? Now, um, another question was, let me see if I can find it. Uh-oh. Um, I think I can remember it. Oh, yes, a question in the den. <clears throat> Excuse me. JNK, junk bonds. This is the spider, Barclays, um, bond yield. Uh, this is a high yield bond ETF. Plummeting right now at 34.90, that's 3.49%. Just the other day, early, uh, late October, it was at 36. This is a big move, two points in bonds. So I'm looking at the chance <clears throat> that the arch formation of the monthly chart is telling us that Money is moving into the higher end, into, say, the really quality munis or the, or, the, or the AAA, the really good quality bonds. And the TLT right now is up at 122.17, up $1.59. I like that. I think that's really good action. But it's in a trading range. Remember, we discussed that. I think bonds in a trading range, I don't think they're going to break out or break down just yet. Of course, we've got a week to go, and then the Fed makes its decision. But at quarter point... Yeah, you know, the market can handle a quarter point. It's going to be the frustration when the market says, wait a minute, is this just a quarter point now? And then in February or March, they add another quarter point and then another. It's the speed of the change and the rate of the change. So these are the things that the market is going to be uncomfortable with. If it suddenly feels that, no, it was just this one-time move, they're going to wait months, six months or more before they make another move. That will really help the market. Everything falls apart if the Dow takes out the seven. Uh, sorry, the sixteen thousand five hundreds, um, say nine hundred to a thousand points from here down, and it does it sooner rather than the end of December to or the beginning of uh, <clears throat> January. If it starts to head down sharply now, then we've got to think um, the market is actually going to be really afraid of the bond yield uh, climbing. And we'll have to deal with that. Okay, so now we've got that out the way. <clears throat> I want you to talk about <clears throat> the relationship. I'm going to give it to you now. TRCCI. This is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Reuters Equal Weight Commodity Index. It has a little bit of everything. I maybe I'll have to call Trade Station. They've got to get rid of this this incorrect spike here. Bad tick. It's just messing up my charts, but it hasn't changed things too much. We've gone to lower lows in the day in the in the monthly chart. Last week we went to lower lows in the in the weekly chart, but the daily is just starting to show technical signs that it's attempting a bounce. So it's going to be really important. It takes in all the commodities. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay. So far in the macro aspect, I'll talk about this on Thursday night. We've seen a deflationary. Uh, um, slant to just about everything. Try buying something. Just You can go online. You can go talk to the dealer. You can go to a store. I just read last night, pharmaceutical. You can go to the uh, CVS. You can go to different uh, places and say, hey, I can get a better price. And they're all in competition. You wouldn't have thought so. Um, can you believe that in one area, one <clears throat> in one town, or a city, maybe it was a city within a five block area or something, you could get a price for some one of them, one medication, the difference between $15 and $200. Same medication, same name, same everything. How does that work? What's going on? That's what's going on here. We're talking about a deflationary aspect because of competition. I'll be right back. Dow's down 160, has to be down 20. <laughs> Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry. Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, folks. Just real quickly, I've got my chart up. I showed this earlier on right there with the 10 minutes. I think that that was the low. Of, I think it was the low of the day, 2064.50. We should rally up, and the big test will come right there with the target of... Uh, 207.8.75 in the E-mini, and that should happen around about 1.30 or so to 2 o'clock. And then we'll see if we're making an arch pattern to come back and retest, or oh, that's it. Now we, we come going to the upside question I just had. Uh, Chris wanted to know, hi Basil, I hope you're well. I'm listening to your show and was wondering if you could clarify one thing. It sounds as though you are still leaning bullish at the moment, I am. Does this mean you are still expecting a Santa rally this year and do they usually happen around mid-December? Traditionally, if they're going to do it, that's when they do it. But December, remember, is also a year where they've got a lot of fluctuations with tax and essentially all sorts of things going on. So sometimes you close right the last day of the year is a close at the high of the year. And sometimes you, if, if you've survived October, the September, October decline very well, then what happens is that December's the choppy year where people are preparing for the next year. So the high might be made about two thirds to a third of the way through the month. And then you could have a sell off going into the end of December. And that starts January off on a weak note. Uh, so I just want to clarify I'm waiting for the waveform to get uh, where I want it to a leg D. 
and that's on the upside. Uh, and do they usually happen around mid-December, or have you had second thoughts on that scenario? Please clarify. Thanks, uh, Chris. Well, I think I've clarified, but I've got to give you levels. I'm wrong. If the Dow, the short term, right now, I'm talking about the short term, if the Dow starts to take, going to the 17,400s again, uh, it's going to be real tough. That's all I can say right now. But I, this is my bias. So, and, and, and that are, I'm a trader in my, uh, my uh, opening call. That's the way we go. So let me just do a couple of things now, just real quickly. Besides the fact that it is the, um, it is, uh, the Tiger dollars that you can get, I hope, I hope you have a chance to, to go to uh, my webinar on Thursday night. This is a great, just what a perfect time. You get 30 days free. What 30 days could you want? You want the days of this December going to early January because that's where I think is the greatest risk to the downside. And we'll see how we are, if there's any chance of breaking even further to the upside than I think on the shorter term. So uh, Basil Chapman, Eddie Wade 5, not an expert, but at least I do understand Eddie Wade 5 as it relates to the Chapman Wave very, very well. And I'll be talking about that. And that's Thursday, December the 10th at 6 p.m. For all subscribers to my opening call newsletter, sign up for a free trial. The other thing is that when you sign up, you do need your password to get in. Once you're in, then you'll see all these charts. Look at this. I, I, I won't be doing this again. I just had to do it because everything I was start, working on over the weekend, I, I included as a chart because I wanted people to have time Saturday and Sunday in their own leisure. You can still look at it in your own leisure. These are long -term, very long-term charts. Let me show you here. Gold, very long-term chart. I talk about this is going right back to the low when my the XAU was at 44 and I got a buy signal. I think it was November of... 1999 or was it 2000 right in the low there um so this is this is bold formation is what i'm going to talk to you about show you how the comparison between what's happening now in the dollar i'm really bullish on the dollar looking out now it's going to have a, a period of rest a des well deserved period of rest so a whole bunch of things are going on this is a fantastic and there'll be particular positions we take over the coming weeks that are trying our best to look at the long-term perspective, buy and hold type thing. So I, I, I think it's very important. I hope, I hope uh, you can go. Oh, there it is. Look, there's the e-money moving higher right in that little rect uh, the um, uh, ch channel I drew. So you've got a fantastic show coming up. Right now, you've got a show that this is a premiere of the show. It is the swimming show. It's how to teach you to swim. So come for some swimming lessons with Kevin Inks, Options Hour, right now, TFNN, from Think or Swim, I mean, if ever there was a person that really just gives you fantastic knowledge and just a great learning experience and trading experience, Kevin's the guy. Coming up in a few minutes' time. Thank you so much for being here. Check out my opening call. I think you'll find it very informative. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for being here. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN. N.